in our teachings as Anishinaabe Kwe, of course women embody the earth, but also we're responsible for the water. The first water that a, a baby is in is in a woman, from the rain to the snow to the you know rivers to the underground aquifers to the water inside a woman. Those are all the different sacred waters. I am Winona LaDuke, Binesi Kwe Indigenikaz Makwondo Dam. I live on the White Earth Reservation, northern Minnesota. I'm a human being, just trying to be a decent human being here. Right now, we are facing the largest pipeline company in the world, the Enbridge Company, plus the Koch brothers. And they will destroy our water if we let them in here. We're out here, the rice is still free to, to be able to live in its natural environment. On a level of spirituality there and some of those usages, you know, it's critical. To me, you know, there isn't any other superfood uh, out there compared to rice for the Indian people. It makes us strong and then being out here, ricing every day, you know, leads to a healthy lifestyle. The young people in our community, you know, uh, have been raised on it. So I've been racing, you know, probably, uh, well, I can say for sure 49 years. There's 100 kernels in here. You know, when 8% is falling into the lake, that's when it, uh, we start racing. Somewhere between here and there, you know, the highest ground, that's where they want to put the pipeline. It just doesn't seem, uh, you know, logical not for the wild rice, it's not likely that there would be any uh, tribal folks around here. We have a public policy crisis in the state of Minnesota. I'm like the rest of you. I have lived my entire life in the petroleum era. We all use oil, I get that. But what I want is a graceful and elegant transition out of it. The remaining oil that is there, you got to either blow up the bedrock of Mother Earth and frack it so that you destroy the water and the air with a bunch of benzene in North Dakota. Or you got to go drill in the Arctic, in these people's village, 20,000 feet under the ocean and pretend that that's going to work out. You've entered an era that is so extreme in your behavior that we're at a point when we need to look at our addiction and figure out how to transition away from it. Because the fact is, is that what remains in the petroleum era is gonna kill us. In my experience, people have relinquished a lot of power. They relinquished a lot of power to governments and they shouldn't relinquish power to people who make such bad decisions. We're in support of this project. We're a pipeline company that does fabrication. We build uh, pumping stations. Which one did I bring? Yeah. We brought, we brought the snowmobiles. On the top of that is what they call a forwarder, and that hauls logging equipment, or logs out of the forest. These people are in it for the money. They take many, many trees at one time, and to park them out there like, that's some environmentally eco-friendly thing we should continue? I don't know what to think about it. Those things destroy the earth. For me, this is my place to recharge and my refuge from everything else. I guess the best part for me, though, is being able to feed my community. In 2012, a white pickup rolled into my yard, and it was a contract land person from Enbridge, and they said, a pipeline's going to go right through the middle of your farm. You know, they did tell a lot of lies to people. They told me that all my neighbors had agreed to this and I was the only one holding up this project. And when I talked to my neighbors, they didn't know anything about it. Of course, they say there's not gonna be any environmental impact and people just believed it. I just don't think these pipelines are a good idea anywhere.
one of our most precious treasures is this lake in the northeast corner of our reservation. Traditionally, our people move from south to north and follow the rice harvest. The pipeline's gonna go right through that lake, right through that lake's watershed and also right through the best lake watersheds down here. And this is not, you can't do that to us. Enbridge would like to be the corporation that doesn't have a leak. I get that, because it doesn't help you. You know, we don't want you to have a leak either. We don't want any leaks. We have not uh, had to um, work on a rice lake after oil has gotten into it. I don't believe there's been any contamination like that that I know of. Except for that the Scientific American reports that you have a 57% chance of a catastrophic leak. You know, so that's not so great for those of us who actually live here. The first part that, that we strive for at Enbridge is prevention. So when those areas are, are needed for investigation, landowners are contacted um, in order to get to the pipe and figure out what the issue may be and fix the issue. And then restoration is conducted as it would be with normal pipeline construction. Um, thank you for answering. That's, that was interesting. My question is a little bit more specific and prior to a leak. The fact is, is that this is a very delicate aquatic ecosystem up here. If you put a pipeline through that delicate ecosystem, how are you going to restore a wild rice bed? Can you tell me how you do that? This is a mixture of cornmeal and this puffed wild rice also. The Winona's work ties in directly with the work that I've been doing with the food systems. This food is so sustainable, I'm using so much wild food. It's important for all of us. Winona is a fearless and dedicated leader and she's inspired myself and many others uh, this summer to stand up for clean water and the preservation of our environment. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Winona Ledoux. Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. What a great day, huh? It's really a great day, and I'm really honored to see all of you and that we all could come together and celebrate the beautiful time that this is. Mano Minike Jesus, the wild rice making moon. This life is beautiful. I want people to understand that Native people are in the center of this and we all need to work together. In our prophecies, they say this is a time of the seventh fire. And in that time, they say people would have a choice between two paths and one path would be well-worn but scorched. The other path would be green, and it would be our choice upon which path to embark. This one path, it's a path that is about life. The other path will kill us. So I, I want people to think about that, that you can live without oil, but you cannot live without water. In a different way, same cut, same guts, same crazy, same cut, same guts, same.